All right, hey guys. So for today's shave, I'm going with the dome shave. I do have about 24 hours worth of growth. So today we are using Bear Storm Man Leviathan matching splash. So I'm getting really close to killing off this tub. It started having the ring of death and what I did is I take some soap from the outside and I fill in that center. Uh, Leviathan, you know, it's a very polarizing scent to a lot of people. Either people love it or they hate it. I don't really see too many people that are just like, ah, oh, it's okay. Um, you know, it's one of those ones that When you use the soap and then you use the splash, it creates this really beautiful scent. So the soap smells to me kind of like a little bit of a roasted coffee. And some people say there's like a cigarette smell in there. And I kind of get that, but it's more to me of a, like an old leather almost. And the splash is very strong in the coffee realm. Um, I'm not sure if I'll pick up another one of these yet once it's killed. And I might wait until end of next year. Because um, this kind of scent to me is better during colder months. And now that I'm in Key West and it's November, I'm shirtless and in shorts 90% uh, of the time. So... I don't foresee me wanting this again until maybe, you know, where I'm somewhere else with the RV in a cooler environment. But um, it is on my kill list just because it has so little left that I'm like, you know, I kind of want to get rid of it. The splash, though, is really new. I bought this used and I bought the splash new just to match. Um, so I still have a ton of the splash left. Uh, so if I do get it, I'm still good on the splash. If I don't get it, then I'll probably be selling this or piffing it. Usually when I sell software like soap and splashes, I try to sell it as a lot for like really cheap. Um, like I just sold like six soaps and like six splashes and a few EDTs for like 40 bucks shipped. And it cost, uh, it was like 45 shipped and it cost me like $17 to ship it. Um, with my software, if I'm selling it, I'm not even looking to break even. I'm just looking to move it, really. Um, and that's why sometimes I'll even piff things. Uh, but it is what it is. For the razor of choice today, I wanted to go with my version 1 of the winning razor head. And this one, as you can see, has been polished. This is a Wolfman handle. Um, they have the version 2 now of the winning razor and it's out as of right now So it released it sold out in 12 minutes and now it's back again from Yates and The version 2 looks very interesting to me I'm not sure I'm still kind of hesitant on buying it. It's like 75 bucks the handle looks a lot better than the version 1 handle But I use a Wolfman handle on mine. I do have the version 1 handle and it is polished um, but I don't necessarily love it. I don't hate it. So I use this Wolfman handle because for my WR2 Wolfman razor, I use the Timeless TI Crown handle because uh, it makes it feel a lot more well balanced. It's a lighter handle. But this one just feels really good with the winning razor head for some reason, even though it's heavy. It's a heavy handle, but I love the grip on it. And it's a mixture of two of the Wolfman handles so it has the grip up here of one and it has the grips down here of another I really like it I enjoy it I'm still unsure if I want to buy the version 2 yet um, especially because I'm not a huge fan of how it turned out with uh, the machining I really wish they had like a polished version of it so I might hit up a couple people that I know that do polishing and see if they think they, they could polish it. 
And if they could, then I probably will buy it. But this one right here, it's it's great. I've never had any issues with it. Um, one of the new updates for the version 2 that I saw was instead of these little holes for lather channels, they actually have real lather channels. But I've never had an issue with this getting clogged either. So, um, yeah, maybe if you shaved it, you know, three days worth at a time, you'd have issue. But I usually shave almost every day, so um, felt like I would use it today. You know, give it another test run, see how it does, and make some more decisions to see if I want to get the version 2. Um, if I get the version 2, I probably will be selling the version 1 because I don't think there's a reason to have uh, version 1 and version 2. Um, especially me living in an RV, I don't have much space. So I'm starting to do a purge. Like I said, I just purged some software uh, on the table right now. I got a couple brushes that I'm about to list for sale. Um, and then uh, I also have a few razors that I already know that I want to list for sale. Uh, but because I want to kill this tub, and it's been a while since I've used... Because uh, right now, I, I do rotations with my brushes, so right now I'm using mainly um, Declaration Grooming, like B14, 15, 16. I am using a little bit of uh, other brushes here and there. Um, and what I'll do is I'll use those brushes for a few weeks to a month, and then I'll switch out to something else. So I might switch out to, hey, now I'm going to use my Declaration Grooming B11, 13, and 9, A and A+. Plus. Um, or I might switch out to like, hey, I'm going to use my TNS brushes. Um, so today I'm using actually one of my Turn and Shave TNS brushes. It's been soaking. And this is going to be the Galaxy Pour, which of course it's not going to come out great looking on my iPhone 8. But this is the M1 Knot. And there wasn't really many of these made. Uh, I think there was maybe like 12 if I'm right, of these made, and they came in these really cool wooden boxes. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the wooden box. I just have the brush. Um, and there is a little patch of hair right here. You can kind of see that uh, it looks like the tips broke off. I'm not sure if it's, you know, was user error. Somebody was just really rough on it before my time. Um, I don't feel that. It still feels super soft when I use it and shave with it. And even when it's dry and I just rub it against my skin. I don't feel any kind of sharpness or like anything's even missing. Uh, this is a very dense knot. The densest knot I own for sure. Um, and it's really jelly. So I don't know if maybe that was it too. That it's just so jelly that they broke off. But since I've owned it, I haven't seen anything else happen to the top. But it kills a lot of soap just because it's so dense. And what's crazy about it is for it being as dense it is, as it is, it works flawlessly. Like, it releases soap great. It loads really well, even though it is on the jellier side. But I've had more trouble loading brushes that have less gel and are less dense than I have with this one. Um, and that kind of shows you that Milton over there at TNS, even at his beginning stages of hand tying the first M1, that he really knows what he's doing with these brushes. But obviously the more dense, the more hairs that are packed into a brush, the more soap it's going to be able to uh, pick up and eat, right? So, I figured, eh, it's been a while. Adding a little bit more water in there. I didn't bloom this soap. I usually do bloom my soaps just because I feel like it makes them a little easier to load. Hopefully everybody's doing good. It's Monday as I'm videotaping this. And today I just ran some errands, did a little grocery shopping, things like that. I like to do my errands during the week uh, because now that I'm retired, if I go on the weekend, so does everybody else, everything's packed. So it's a lot easier to do grocery shopping during the week. And we're going to start 
maybe another 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that's probably overloaded, to be honest. But we're going to go with it. We're going to dump it in the water right here. And we're going to put a little water on my head. And we're going straight to it. The M1 is experience. You have to like a very dense brush to like it. Um, of course, the only way to find something like this is on buy, sell, used, trade. And the couple I've seen that go for sale go for quite a bit just because there wasn't many of them made. And I'm not sure how many M1s completely there were made. I know of this pour, the Galaxy pour, he only made like 12, I think. But what comes to my head when I use this brush is a wall of badger hair. But it still has like great flow through. It has really decent scrubbing action too. It's not heavy backbone, but obviously the more hair you have, right, the more backbone you'll obviously will you'll have to have. Just a pleasure to use, something different. And I have thought about selling it just because I don't use it a whole lot. But every time I think about selling it, I stop just because it's so unique. It's such a unique brush that I'm like, oh, you know, it doesn't take up that much space. And it's cool to have something that's so unique as this. And it's one of those brushes where if I got rid of it, I'm not sure if I'd be able to find another one. Right now I smell a decent amount of uh, coffee and like a leather. Again, uh, and this is also I think the older art label, which is kind of cool. You can see like the coffee, but it's like a dragon head shape. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those things where I do like it. I think this is on the bus as well. Yep, so this is the new one. Oh, I forgot to say the blade in here is an Astra SP. I know the Astra SP isn't for everybody, but for me personally, whether I cut my hair on my head or my face, it just works really well for me. So I'm trying something a little different today. Um, usually when I'm in like uh, bathrooms at the RV parks and what have you, this is what I would use when I go to the bathroom. Um, the shower, should I say, not the bathroom. This is what I use to soak my brushes uh, just because it's collapsible. So it's really easy to put in my little shower bag. Uh, but today I'm like, you know what? Instead of running the water, I want to try to see if I can just rinse out the razor in this. But the Astra SPs work really well for me, to be honest. Like, they're really smooth. I can use them in... Oh, look at that. Oh, you guys can't even probably see it right there. A little dot. I think I had a little tiny pimple right there. Oh, yeah, that's working. Yeah, see that that works perfect. I'm not getting too bad of any clogging or anything. But in the Astra SP, I can use it in like any razor. And I've been using Astra SP since I started wet shaping. So I've been using those for like 12 years now, 13 years, something like that. 
because uh, I started wet shaving in around 2011-ish. So 21, 22, 23, 12 years. But uh, I think this one is on its maybe its third use. And I usually can get like, depending on the razor I use it with, I usually can get anywhere from three uses to about five uses. And yeah, this, the winning razor is just so smooth, guys. Like, it's like it's effortlessly cutting. And the Astra SPs aren't the sharpest blade I've ever used. But they're, like, I have a day's worth of growth. And I could do one pass and be good. Like, this is fairly close already to BBS. Like, it's not BBS, but it's a... DFS, right? Damn fine shave. Top of the head. That's why I'm really interested if the new winning razor is any more efficient than... And I've only seen one video on it. And uh, I, forget, I always forget the YouTuber's name. Really energetic kid. Uh, kid. Guy. Um, he, uh, I think it's called Subi, like Subaru, but Subi, Subi Shaves, and I w just watched his today on it, and he made it seem like it's more, uh, efficient, like you can take basically more days worth of growth now down with it. And, you know, his big thing was that the version 1 was good, but the version 2 is better. And, yeah, the only thing that got me, like I said, is I really love how this one, it was able to be polished, and how gorgeous it looks with it being polished, that I need to see if version 2 can be polished. So, man, that was nice. So there we go. First, uh first pass and yeah guys like I could get away with just one pass with this razor but we're going to do at least two because we're enjoying it okay I actually might yep I'm going to have to probably go back to the puck. And get a little bit more soap. I could get I could get away with this to be honest, just because the Obama Obama Omnibus uh, it's so slick that like you could use the residue that after you put water on it but we are not low on soap even though I am low on this one Hopefully everybody's doing good. Uh, it's Cyber Monday. And I've been doing pretty good, I feel like, on holding back on purchases for wet shaving gear this time. Um, so far, the only thing I purchased is the TI Diamondback that just came back. 
I really wanted to try that razor for a while, and I almost bought it a couple times at like, the cheapest I almost bought it at was like three something, and the most expensive, I almost paid like 600 bucks once for it. And I just got the TI version, but I, the, probably won't come out till February is what they said on the website. And with saying that, I paid like, I want to say it was like $260, um, and it's like a Black Friday sale right now. They said later they're going to be charging $350 for the razor. $260 is a hell of a deal if it shaves as good as what everybody says. Now, the Diamondback uh, used to be stainless steel, so this one's going to be a little lighter, which for me is a positive because I like... 40 grams to about 85 grams, and I've told you guys that. Second pass, we're going across the grain. Um, so the original was a little heavier than that, which I was told it was really well balanced, though. So probably wouldn't have been an issue because, like, my Rothnail Sailor, it's like 130, 140 grams, so way, way past what I usually like. But it's so well balanced that I enjoy the hell out of it, to be honest. But, if I can get something that weighs a little less, why not? Especially at a cheaper price than the stainless steel ones on the used market. And this combo, it's just annihilating the hair. Like, it's smooth. And I've said it for a while. I think everybody should have a winning razor. Like, a lot of times for new people, we suggest things like a Henson razor nowadays. You know, back in the day, it used to be a 34C. Gillette is what everybody would recommend. But I honestly think... Let me just dump this. I think we should be recommending the winning razor it's cheap even right now the second version it's like 75 bucks but you know I bought my winning razor used on the market and I had two I had one that wasn't polished and one that is polished and the reason I had two is because I liked uh, I had liked my unpolished one so much that I saw a polished one come up on the used market and I was like, oh yeah, I'm taking that. And I like the polished one a lot better. Mainly for looks. You know, it does feel a little smoother than the unpolished version, but that could be a placebo effect, right? It might not really be any smoother. Let's see where that got us. But version 2 is like 75 bucks, so... You know, to some people that might be pricey, but that's really not that expensive. And the big scanger of life. 75 bucks for a razor that will last you a lifetime. Um, you know, me being a PF personal finance nerd, uh, I can tell you right now... Most people spend way more than 75 bucks a month in eating out stupid food. Um, most people's cell phone services are like a godly amount of 100 plus, you know. Um, most people's cable bills that they barely ever watch is, you know, 100 to 200 dollars from what I've seen. Um, 
So, you know, a lot of times people think stuff in the wet shaving community is expensive. Like, oh, that $100 razor is super expensive. But then they're going and spending $600 and eating out a month. Um, you know, it's just, you know, where's your money going and what do you enjoy? I enjoy wet shaving. Um, I enjoy it a lot, actually. It's kind of like my me time. Oh, yeah, that's good. So I'm personally willing to spend a little bit more on the experience, right? So like a good way to explain it is because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, my $10 razor will shave just as good as your $75 or $500 razor. Um, maybe. Maybe not, though. Uh, the tolerances of machining nowadays is way better than any of your vintage razors and I'm a vintage razor guy um, on top of that you know I look at it as um, like a car right I can get to you know from here to wherever in a 1995 Toyota Camry or a Honda Civic with zero issues right um, it's going to be reliable. It's going to get me from point A to point B. But I can tell you right now that you're going to enjoy that ride a hell of a lot better with something more expensive like, say, a BMW M3. Um, you know, a Lamborghini. Um, you know, a Mustang fucking Cobra. I don't know what your knack is. Um, maybe it's a big lifted truck. You're going to enjoy that more, right? Because you're going to enjoy the experience more. So it's not just a point A to point B. Now I'm actually enjoying the journey from point A to point B. And that's kind of how I look at this gear, right? So my nicer razors, they give me a better experience from the start to the end. It's that journey, right? Same thing with my brushes, right? I like custom hand-tied brushes. Uh, because for years I didn't use those. I used, you know, synthetic. I used four. I had one or two cheaper badgers, but I mainly used synthetic and I mainly used four. And it got the job done, you know. It, I did that for ten years of wet shaving, you know. I did it even in the Middle East when I was over there for a couple of years uh, with these wet shaving. No issues, right? But I can tell you night and day difference. Of how much more I enjoy this now than I used to. Even back in the day, I went like a year with just using cheap soap that worked. I used Arco and Paraso Red. And you know what? It worked. I used also my third one was Tabak when I wanted to get a little crazy. And for years, I used just that and I saved money by doing that. And it got the job done, so I was like, why do I ever need to do anything else? And then, you know what? One day, I was like, man, life's too short. Like, let me start trying other things to see how I enjoy them, see if I'm missing out on anything. And, man, I, I wish I would have started buying the gear that I have now sooner, like better razors, uh, custom brushes, hand-tied, better soaps that are made by artisans. Um, not saying that Arco is bad, not saying that Tabak is bad, not saying that your, you know, cheap $10 boar brush is bad. Um, because I still have those things. I still have Tabak right now. I still have a cheap $10 brush. It's a boar brush. It's an Omega over there. And you know what I use that for now? I use it for my beard. <laughs> so that way I can keep it all straight. And I use it to brush off the crap off my computer keyboard. But it's the experience for me, so I enjoy this experience more uh, with this style gear. And I apply that kind of principle to everything I do in my life. I know this is kind of a rant outside the wet shaving community, but I literally do that with everything. And it doesn't have to be expensive to get that better experience. That's what we need to remember, too. Um, because it could just be something that is a little bit more expensive, so maybe instead of the $10 brush, Maybe you just went out and bought a $100 chisel and hound brush. Um, I guarantee you, your experience will be a lot better than that $10 Omega. Um, so it doesn't have to be a $500 Barlett brush that you're buying. It, it could just be, yeah, that $100 chisel and hound. Or, you know, it could be a $100, $150 trotter brush that you're buying. Um, so, you know, 
obviously there are price points involved in that and obviously I don't know your income compared to my income but what I do know is as a PF guy I've coached and helped thousands and thousands of people with their personal finances like literally I've helped anybody from people that make less than 20 grand a year to the highest I've ever helped is people that make around 700,000 to a million dollars a year and it's the same no matter what your income level is is people below money and have no idea where it goes so like you can probably afford more expensive gear to try um, you just gotta look at your budget and start making those checks in the box um, but wrapping it back around is enjoy the experience too man don't don't like let others or your negative beliefs about something distract you right for 10 years I believe that nothing could be the $10 brush there was no reason or that my 1960s Gillette Slim was the best razor ever and nothing could beat it. There was no reason to spend more uh, There was no reason to get these these hipster soaps, you know Now I'm like damn man. I was pretty dumb and I could have been enjoying the experience a lot more um, Yeah, I still got good shaves back then, but I'm getting a much better experience today uh, And that's my thing, you know, I'm 38. I'm retired. I want to get the best experience out of life uh, that I possibly can with everything that I do in my life but let's wrap this up so we're gonna go back and talk about what we use today sorry about the rants guys but I'm trying to talk a little bit more and sometimes I get on my soapbox a little bit um, for today's soap we used Leviathan uh, by Bear Star Man we used the matching splash and again the matching splash man it, it's different than the soap and I gotta say, like, I, I have a love and hate relationship when artisan, artisans, uh, artisans do that because a big part of me wants to shift away from buying the splashes and just buy soaps to save space on my shelf back there um, because living in an RV, I move. I'm trying to keep everything on that shelf. Right now, I put it all in tubs and then I put it back on the shelf when I'm stopped somewhere. Um, but I'm trying to leave it all up there now. I'm trying to figure out a way to keep it up there. And the biggest issue isn't the tubs of soaps. Yeah, those can get knocked over and maybe, you know, the plastic cover will get scratched or something. But who cares? It's these, though, right? Because if these stay up there and they do fall, that's glass. They're going to break. So I have thought about switching and not buying splashes anymore. But then I remember, like, stuff like this. Like, man, like, the experience of this soap is so much better with the splash than it is with just the soap like this this smells like a beautiful roasted coffee especially here in key west we uh thankfully and we're very lucky here we have a very big cuban culture here in key west and man when i'm walking like uh down in key west which it's a couple miles from my rv so the island's very small it's not a big island uh, get the beautiful dark rich Cuban food and the Cuban coffee is very famous because it's strong and, and it's so good and that's what this reminds me of a really dark roast coffee yeah man that was great we used the M1 that was just it's such an interesting experience um, I don't like it enough that I would probably own two of them but I'm having a hard time letting it go. I've thought about letting it go, but just because it's so unique and so different, that I have a, I'm having trouble selling this one. Um, I have trouble letting go of some of my brushes, anyways. But this has been one that I keep thinking about letting it go because I, I don't use it often. I only use it once in a great while. Like I probably use it five times since I bought it last year, but I just can't seem to let it go. Uh, today we finished her with the razor. Astra SP was the blade. I think it's on its third use. I think this was its third use. The winning razor version 1 polished head with this gorgeous Wolfman 
handle and the polish, they, they match pretty fucking well, to be honest. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my little rant today. Um, this is the second video I've made now in Key West, um, shaving my head in the RV. Uh, so I'm going to keep trying to make these and keep uh, tweaking them to make it easier for me too with cleaning up afterwards. And this so far, this worked pretty well. So I appreciate you guys uh, stopping by and watching me. Um, check you guys out in the next one. See you later.